Hello and welcome to the ADEC Evolve podcast with me, John Darg, Territory Manager for the Southwest of the UK. Um, today I'm delighted to be joined by Bobby Bandal, um, dentist, business owner, uh, mentor, all round good guy. Um, and I know he's come back refreshed from a holiday. Bobby, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks for joining. No, no problem. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Excellent. So, um, as part of the Evolve series of podcasts, what we aim to do here at ADEC is go beyond the comfort of our dental chairs and do a deeper dive into the dental industry to bring the profession some added value. Um, and um, I'm delighted, as I say, to be joined by Bobby today so that we can find out more about developing a brand new squat practice. Um, Bobby, I, you've, you've got your own um, education format now, Squat Success, which I, I, I've seen go from strength to strength. And I, it's been an exciting journey seeing you grow on social media, actually. Um, the profile has, as I say, gone from strength to strength. But if you don't mind, I would like to start at the very beginning, if that's all right with you. And yeah. the reason why I want to do that is because <coughs> I'm acutely aware that at dental school, dentists are taught um, how to be dentists but yeah. not necessarily business owners. Yeah. Um, and so what I'd like to do is explore, how did you yeah. get from that point of qualifying yeah. as a dentist? I think it was at Birmingham, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. So qualifying at Birmingham yeah. to then becoming the business owner that you yeah. are today. Yeah, so it's a bit of a journey really, <laughs> all the way back for dental school. First thing is I didn't actually get into dental school uh, the first time I applied, <laughs> okay. believe it or not. <laughs> so I applied, I didn't get in. Uh, second time round, uh, I took a gap year after I got my grades. I reapplied and I actually failed again. <laughs> I didn't get a single place. Uh, and I actually forced my way in. So I wrote to the admission tutor at University of Birmingham, um, fighting my case and they invited me for an interview and then uh, thankfully they let me in. Um, so started dental school at Birmingham, that was back in 2008. Um, absolutely loved university life uh absolutely hated dentistry and hated dental school <laughs> believe <laughs> this it or not. is getting off to a ropey <laughs> start so far bobby i've got to be honest yeah uh I, I i'll be honest i did not enjoy dental school um i didn't i didn't enjoy dentistry i didn't enjoy the clinical side uh, i found it very difficult um i nearly got kicked out in my third year because i failed my clinical exams twice um, and where I really uh, put my head down was in the fourth and fifth year and kind of got through and everything was fine. Um, and then when I started VT, when I finished university, my foundation training year, that's when I started to really love dentistry. So I just hated dental school, but when I actually st got into practice and saw it in real life and actually started working properly, that's when I really started to fall in love with it. Um, and then I think following on from that, when I got my first proper job, and the principal that I had who mentored me um, and gave us a really supportive environment, that's again, just kind of deepened everything and where I really, really started to enjoy it and started to thrive. Okay. Um, so yeah, it kind of came around full circle. Um, so I loved dentistry, uh, started doing a lot of clinical work, implants, um, and as I said, my principal at the time was brilliant. I always knew in my head that I wanted to have my own business at some point, however that looks. I think that stems from the fact that our family have always been in business, so we don't really know anything different. I think it was almost like an expectation, <laughs> okay. you know, kind yeah, of yeah. put upon you that, you know, you're just gonna have your own business at some point. Uh, but I didn't know how that was gonna look or how that was gonna play out. So after about six or seven years in general practice, um, I got really bored um, doing the same thing over and over again. Practice got sold to a corporate, that made things a lot worse. And that point I left dentistry completely. Um, and I became really disheartened with dentistry again. So I left dentistry, I handed my notice in. Um, I didn't tell my wife until after I'd done it. Wow. <laughs> that I had no job to go to anymore in two months time. Um, but it all worked out. So I w decided I'd dabble in a bit of property stuff. My parents had done that. I found that really, really boring. And then when I left dentistry, what I really realized was I still love dentistry, but I just hated the environment that I was in at that point and what I was doing. So then it was a case of now's the time to start my own business. 
and that's how yeah having new dental so was born. just taking a yeah. quick pause bobby um one of the things that i've noticed from that sort of uh, yeah. sort of brief story that you've given us there on, on your background is that you seem to um fuel um ambition and drive with some adversity is that yeah. a conscious thing or do you think that that's just the way you program no i think that's just the way i'm programmed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i just think um everything just goes in cycles and you know you have struggles all through life and it's just a matter of finding your way through them and figuring things out wow don't i don't really know any great life lesson really right there know, i think don't guys. Really know any different yeah yeah, yeah. awesome yeah. okay so um so you're at a place where you're enjoying dentistry <coughs> again yeah where do we go from there um before i set the practice up yeah 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 so um after i left that job then it was a case of deciding that i want to set my own practice up now i did look at buying practices but everything was just too expensive and it was working out much more cost effective to start from scratch um i'd been into my old principal to set up something from scratch and you know he really gave me a push to just go for it um so then acquired the building you know stones throw away from where i live um and start the whole process just before covid um the building needed a lot of work doing to it double story extension gutting completely um and i then realized that i actually have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> uh, there wasn't really that many people out there to help at the time yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that that whole journey of setting up the practice is a whole story in itself uh again about adversity <laughs> okay <laughs> because it was just difficult it was really really tough um you pretty much give me a problem and i had it wasted loads of money had builders who were committing fraud had to kick off the site i uh, had inspections by hsc um, my father was really unwell nearly passed away you know uh, during that that process uh, you know while we were building i was still working as an associate four days a week so i couldn't be on site all the time um so it was just battle after battle after battle uh and by the time i got to opening the practice i was pretty much dead <laughs> um but then we opened and everything just changed you know that was it you know then it was just and boom. it clicked yeah yeah it just clicked yeah. after that it was just boom 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 so i had to go and find a little bit of help for myself um put me back in the right direction uh, and i have no problem with doing that you know i'm a strong believer in finding mentors people that can help you support you coach you um and from there onwards as i said we just went from strength to strength wow okay and and i think it's um it's important to recognize what you were saying there about the fact that there is no set recipe for starting a new practice is there and i think that's probably where your squat success program comes in really because it's yeah. starting to help people develop that um so you were able to learn from some of those challenges yep and um you've you've got to a place where the, the business i know is is thriving um and i think it's probably worth giving a bit of background at this point guys as to uh, as to how this podcast came about so um i'm extremely thankful for the fact that bobby chose adec as as one of his equipment brands of choice in the practice um and through his uh adec dealer of choice uh which, which was bradgate dental um who who helped to bring bobby's practice to life um we actually facilitated um, uh, one of um bobby's squat success meetings at the adec showroom um and so conversations sort of uh, came about and and like i say i mean i've been seeing this this thing grow um from from strength to strength really so at, at this point now utilizing all of those learnings how have you started to convert that into you becoming the mentor because you, you've mentioned that you yeah. sought mentors for a variety of different things yeah but now you're the mentor yeah. so how did you get to yeah. that place <laughs> yeah so it actually happened by accident <laughs> believe okay. it or not <laughs> so it was nothing that was never planned but essentially after i set the practice up i shared a lot of my journey on social media so naturally after that i started getting a lot of dentists asking me you know how did you do this how did you do that how did you get over this problem that problem so i just started sharing everything about every uh, the whole setup journey all the mistakes that i made yeah and you know how you can avoid them um you know what i would do differently now can I just stop you there? Because I think that's really interesting. That I think um, I, I'm not sure a lot of people would be that open about 
sort of mistakes that have been made and stuff. Yeah. Whereas you're actually using that to help other people avoid them. Yeah, so I think one of the biggest things in dentistry is people don't like talking about their failures. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a massive thing and why not? <laughs> You know, one of the biggest things that we can do, one of the biggest things that we can learn from in dentistry, clinically and non-clinically mm -hmm. in business, is our failures. And how do we learn from that? And how do we help other people not make those same mistakes? Um, it's very easy to give up an image that everything's rosy all the time, but it's not. <laughs> and you know, even to this day within the group, I share all the nitty gritty. I share all the problems that we still have as a growing business. Uh, because it's the same problems that they're going to face and it's the same problems that we can help them with um, you know by getting over it ourselves and teaching them how to do it you know maybe in a better way than what we've done yeah yeah and and when you talk about the group actually again one of the things that really impressed me when you had that meeting at the ADEC showroom was um, the sort of community mm. feel that I got from mm. it I know you've got yeah. like a, a big whatsapp group but they, yeah. they seem to be um, a real feeling of network and support there. Yeah. Um, so you were saying, just just going rewinding a little bit, you were saying that this happened by accident and people were asking you about it. And 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 were those almost the first people that you started to mentor then? Yeah, so they were the first people that I started to mentor. Okay. So I took on a first group. I asked everybody, um, you know, I'm going to set this up now properly. I was helping everybody, um, you know, just ad hoc, you know, through Facebook messages and Instagram or whatever it was. Um, so I decided to formalize it. So I put it all into a structure. So it's gonna run like this over the next three or four months. Then we'll have a day together. You can come and see the practice, see what we've done, how we built it. Um, and essentially it's just rolled on from there. So it's just got bigger each time. And it, a lot of it's changed, you know, because obviously I've learned a hell of a lot more since when I first opened. Yeah. And the great thing is, is that I learned from everybody else's experiences as well. So everybody else that's setting up their practices or have opened their practices who have managed to help uh, you know we all learn we all share and one of the biggest things that i wanted to create was exactly like what you said that community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you know we've got such a phenomenal support network now the guys in the group and the girls they're all really good friends and they help each other they share everything uh you know it's got to a point now where you know if i don't answer something somebody else will you know because they're going through the same thing at the same time and they all just jump in um you know that's incredible yeah, yeah, know, yeah it's yeah. incredible to have that and for me when i was setting up the practice it was really lonely you know for most people who do it on their own it's really tough i mean you guys must see it yourselves you you, know, you have a lot of new people setting yeah. up practices yeah. and you're on your own out there in the big world and you don't know what you're doing the first time you've ever set a practice up and it can be quite scary it's a lot of money involved a lot of stress you've got hr issues recruitment staff and you're not used to dealing with any of that <laughs> yeah, whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, we have a group of people who are all doing the same thing, all sharing, all learning, all growing. And, um, you know, it's just great to, to have that support network. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I look back and, if, you know, if I, I wish I could have had that, you know, when I was setting up. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't have had to go through, you know, all, all the hardships that, that, that I went through. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. One of the things I'm thinking, so when you're talking about some of the challenges that you've just described, HR issues and yeah, a variety of different aspects of, of running the business, um, I'm guessing that this isn't just relevant to somebody setting up a brand new business. I'm, I'm, I'm get, uh, do you have people coming to you that are already running a business and actually still need that advice to yeah, you know, help get hundred Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. So, I mean, because we've been running for you know just over a year and a half now, um, the practice has been incredibly successful, you know, we've done really well to date. And, you know, one of the things that I realized is, is that, you know, speaking to a lot of different companies, sales agencies, you know, we're actually doing better than, you know, a lot of existing private practices that have been around for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and all it was just the case of that, you know, I've been really hungry to learn from the best of the best. So I've just gone out and found great people, great dentists, who run successful businesses and learn from them and you know imp try and implement as much of that as I can in my practice but at the same time there's a lot of dentists now who are starting to ask for help who've either got either set up squats but they're struggling so they're not doing very well um, and they don't know how to turn it around or practices that have been around for a little while but they just can't seem to bump things up to that next level yeah 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 mm. so 
how do you package all of that knowledge and information which you've obviously collated from all of these different mentors that you've um, had experience with how do you package that and formulate it as a can we call it a course yeah it's a it's a course stroke mentorship yeah. okay. so it's, it's a blend so it's not just a course as such you know so it lasts over a period of six months you know as a minimum um, you know, setting up a practice is not a straightforward process. It takes time. By the time you find a location, find uh, you know, get a lease, whatever it is, you know, it, it's it's a whole process. It takes anything from six to twelve months, you know, as a minimum. Um, but the way it works essentially is the way I designed it is to take out the overwhelm. So the biggest problem that most dentists have when they're setting up a practice is they get really overwhelmed because there's ten million things running through your head. Mm -hmm. It's I've got marketing, I've got the practice, I've got finance, I've got equipment. How the hell do I know where to start and what do I need to do first? So the way I designed it is is that you split it all up into stages. So obviously there is some crossover between that, but it's essentially it's to take the overwhelm out of it. You do this bit fine don't worry about anything else then we do the next bit and the next bit and the next bit and and that's how it works more digestible more digestible yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay and I, I guess I'm curious to know um, again coming back to it you seem like okay. quite a driven yeah. guy yeah. do you need to have a very firm image of what the end point looks like when you start or not so much yes you, you do. do yeah <laughs> I'm a strong believer in you've got to have an end point mm -hmm. and work backwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that goes for anything. So, you know, one of the things that we talk about on the live day when everybody comes in, most of the dentists at that point are closer into opening their practices, but it's about working everything backwards. If you don't know where you're going, how do you know how to get there? So if you haven't got goals, you know, for example, you're going to set up a practice you want to open. What do you want to achieve in that first year? What do you want to achieve in three years, five years? If in that first year, for example, you want to turn over half a million pounds what does that look like every single month what does that look like every single week mm -hmm. what does that work uh, look like as an hourly rate then what do you know to set your fees as you know based upon that um, you know if you don't have that endpoint in mind how do you know how to get there yeah yeah absolutely I, I, it really resonates with me yeah. to be honest because yeah. it's one of the things that I um, I have a lot of discussions in our, our sort of showroom visits about um, when I'm discussing sort of specking up a chair and a surgery is are we thinking about what the chair is going to be doing sort of in five years time and 10 years time and mm -hmm. you have to sort of look that yeah. far ahead don't you to make sure yeah. that i guess there's headroom for your business to grow um yeah but um so i guess this is a good point a, a good time to ask the question what are some of the most common mistakes that that you see when you're having these conversations with your cohort of uh, of dentists yeah i think some of the most common ones is um spending too much right okay. at the beginning so kitting out more surgeries than you actually need so you know you've got to have the space to grow your business but you don't need to be sat on two free surgeries which are going to be running empty yeah, <laughs> when yeah, you yeah. first set up yeah. and then you've just spent 100 grand on all that equipment and it's not being used uh, and that's one of the biggest ones second biggest one is finance um you know what i've realized is so many dentists have such little understanding of their own finance mm -hmm. before they set up a practice and I'm talking about personal finances, you know, having a really strong understanding of where you're at right now, what can you really afford and what's achievable. Um, I think it's one of these funny ones in the dental profession that I think as dentists, we generally earn so well <laughs> that it gets neglected <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. it's just, you know, <laughs> that a certain amount of money is going to come in every single month. Yeah. So you don't tend to think about it too much, but when you're running a business, you can't operate like that. So one of the biggest things is trying to get them to understand about you know how to run that and manage that and how that follows through then in your business going forwards. So as well <coughs> as that being something that um, I guess a dentist would become more educated on um, following the sort of squat success formula, um, I know that you're a big believer in self-development and, and sort of looking at areas of weakness that yeah. need developing personally. Are there any other ways in which um, a dentist that um, maybe isn't as financially savvy as they could be can, can sort of uh, enhance that skill? Yeah, there's a huge amount of resources out there. Um, just for example, what we were talking about earlier, you were listening to a podcast of mine 
with my friend James Martin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's so you know just have a chat with him, <laughs> okay. listen to his podcast. <laughs> okay. You know he's a dentist who. What, what's the podcast called? Uh, dentist to invest. Okay. Awesome. So he's a dentist, left dentistry. He's actually younger than me, and he teaches dentists all about uh, education around finance and how to run your finances. Um, you can speak to your accountant if you've got a good accountant. Um, you know, those are just the starting points, but you know, books, YouTube, there's so many resources out there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's never ending, but yeah. you know, those are great starting points, you know, for anybody thinking about it in the profession, but then to invest, you know, even that podcast is brilliant. Yeah, I think um, it, this is probably an area that I'd like to explore more really is in terms of sort of leaning on uh, external resources because you highlighted a moment ago that it can be quite a lonely place to be sort of setting up a new business on, on yep. your own. Um, but there are a lot of resources and there are a lot of, like you were describing about mentors, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to help aren't there yeah um, are there any other areas mm. that um, a dentist thinking of setting up a squat practice should be exploring for that sort of help and assistance yeah uh, so one of the biggest things that I tell dentists um, when they're setting up a practice or thinking about setting up a practice the single biggest thing that they can do right now <clears throat> before they've even set their practice up is building their own personal brand on social media okay and it's such a simple thing but so many dentists still neglect it or don't do it. Um, so let me just cl let me just clarify this. So you're not talking about yeah. the practice brand at this point. No, I'm you're talking, talking about, about talking about personal brands. Yeah, okay. Personal brand. Yeah. Um, there's a few reasons behind it. Number one, it helps you develop confidence. When you run a business, you need confidence. You need to be able to speak on film. You need to be able to speak well. You need to be able to be great at communicating, and that's a great platform for you to build that. Okay. Um, and then the second thing is the bigger the personal brand that you have when you open your practice the more patients that will know about you and want to come and see you. Okay. Just to give you an example, one of the dentists in the group at the moment is opening a practice, um, You know, has a huge following on social media. He hasn't opened yet, he's gonna open in around about two months time. Um, and he's already got a waiting list of hundreds of patients wow. waiting, and they all want high value work. You know, It's all Invisalign, small makeovers. And essentially he's sitting on a fortune, and all of that was built through his social media. And the more you can do that, the less you have to pay for marketing. And marketing isn't cheap. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. So marketing strategy starts well before the doors open. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, and, yeah. and also I'd, I'd like to explore, so you mentioned about creating a sort of um, a personal brand and you, you mentioned doing that via social media. Um, social media still has a lot of headroom then to be utilized for marketing, does it? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's still underutilized, okay. without a doubt. Any platforms in particular or? Yeah, I mean, for dentistry, the biggest one's generally gonna be Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok's, you know, still up and coming. So that's gonna grow huge, you know, um, going forwards. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's a simple starting point, you know, Instagram's gonna be the most common. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, what else then do we need to do to develop the brand of the practice then? So you've got a personal brand, you've, you've yep. developed a, an appetite um, for a, uh, people to sort of uh, develop a waiting list. Yep. You've, you've got people ready, what, what do they do next? The, you mean to build the brand of the practice? Of the practice at that stage. Or yeah, yeah, so I guess the brand of the practice all comes down to what you want to achieve and build within that practice. So a lot of people get branding confused with a logo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What, you know, what does my practice look like? Yep. And a brand has nothing to do with that. You know, that is one part of it. For me, the biggest thing about brand, so what we've built at Avenue Dental and what our brand is known for is how well we look after our patients. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, every practice will say we look after our patients really well, but do they really? And it's how well do you go above and beyond the norm, um, you know, to, to build that. And then off the back of that, that builds great customer referrals, which again reduces your marketing spend. Um, okay. But you know, for us, our brand is all built around, we built a practice which is designed in a way that it doesn't look or feel like a practice, it doesn't smell like a practice, it's designed to make people feel extremely relaxed. Um, it's made very, very homely, as you guys have seen for yourself. Um, that's just one aspect of it, but then it's like when the patients come, 
what then happens what's the patient journey what do they go through what's the experience that they get um you know and how well do they feel looked after you know during that journey yeah okay so i'm i'm, I'm seeing brand because as you rightly say i think a lot of people think of a logo yeah. um when you think of a yeah. brand and 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 actually what I'm getting from you is the sense that actually a brand is more about a culture that, you, exactly that, that. that you're building. Yeah, exactly that. The brand is all about a culture, what you're building in your practice, for you, your team, and for your patients. Yeah. Is it fair to say that um, that sort of patient journey is part of what's accelerated the number of new practices? Because we've, I mean, we at ADEC have seen a, a huge increase in the number of brand new squat practices yep. opening up, certainly in the time that I've been with, with ADEC. Um, and I, I can't help but feel that that's to do with patient expectations of, of, you know, considering that patient journey and almost, I mean, again, sometimes in the showroom we talk about sort of de-identifying the experience for yeah, the yeah. patient. Yeah. And, and would you say that that's fair, that that's, that's what's yeah. driven this sort of, this increase? Yeah, so um, patient expectations have definitely gone up. They expect more. So dentistry is much more uh, an experience-related business mm -hmm. than it is clinical these days. Um, so the clinical aspect is still really important, but patients want that experience. But one of the most fascinating things is the patients that come through our doors, we, you know, we largely single new patients as a squat practice, they still have never had that experience anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're all coming from other practices, uh, yeah. you know, locally. But they still, every single day, even yesterday we had a patient in, um, you know, for an implant consultation at a local practice, was happy to have his treatment there, implant, but the service was just terrible. The experience was poor, hence he ended up, you know, in our practice. And it's like, wow, you know, I've never had this experience before. Um, so there's still huge room you know for that to grow which yeah. i think is a really yeah. positive um message for i guess market sentiment that actually there is still a huge demand from patients for yeah. that type of experience yeah. and, and dentistry yeah 100 percent. so you know where we are it's really competitive it's a small town um but we are busier than ever you know we can't get patients in quick enough at the moment um and that's you know that year and a half of building that brand and that reputation um but there is huge demand there's huge demand um yeah, yeah. you know with everything that's going on with the nhs you know dentistry is going to grow private dentistry is still going to grow massively um there's a lot of scaremongering out there for certain people in the profession you know profits are reducing turnover is going down we're not seeing that <laughs> whatsoever <laughs> we're just seeing it go up and up and yeah, up yeah 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 Okay, guys, so I said at the very beginning that I thought we'd probably be able to talk for hours, and we quite literally did. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut here, we're going to take a break, and we're going to look forward to welcoming you back for part two.